Thank you once again for joining us for this graduation ceremony. Again, we can all thank the Lord that we're able to do this for our seniors. He has been gracious to us to be able to have this event. I'm going to ask Brother Joel Allen, who is retiring this year, and we're going to miss him immensely here at this place, but he's a good friend of mine. I'm so thankful for your friendship, Mr. Allen. You can pray for us. Dear Lord, thank you so much that we get to serve you. Um, and I'm glad that you're called the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I'm glad that we get to serve the King of Kings, the King of all the universe. Lord, what a blessing it is to uh, see so many kids that have graduated from our school. Um, and uh, they're here among us. And we get to see them and their family and see the impact that we have made on their life. And Lord, we pray that you continue to bless Bridgeport Baptist Academy and bless this church. Lord, we thank you so much for this time. And we pray that you'll guide and direct our seniors as they go off and they prepare for your will. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen.
Thank you, ladies. That was tremendous. It's my privilege to speak this year at this graduation. One thing we know about graduation speakers is no one remembers years later on a word of what they have said. But we put ours right here so they have to at least wait to leave until I'm done because I graduated yet. I have a few thoughts for you, seniors, and for everyone else, you can listen in along the way. The text I'll use is 2 Timothy 3, verses 14 through 17, begins this way, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. You know, as you leave high school, I have a few words of wisdom for you as you leave uh, that you'll need for life. Here's a couple words for you. Um, one, you will probably use algebra again after this. But with a phone, it becomes a whole lot easier, I promise. Don't forget that today, as of today, you probably don't have any more energy, enthusiasm, hair, or brain cells than you have today. What's the real world, real, real world like? Well, the food's a little better, but besides that, mm, stay in high school. Uh, don't forget when you go to college, they probably don't accept notes from your mother. Just remember that. Maybe, maybe it will. Maybe some will. Uh, we figured out here that you as seniors right here, you've sat through 2,224 days of instruction, not including COVID-19 pandemic. Junior high and high school alone were 3,000 individual class periods. Chapels, 962 chapel messages. 1,322 tests based on two or three a week. And of school, 26,964 hours to get to this point right here. Pat yourselves on the back. That's amazing. Uh, by any calculation, by any stretch of imagination, that is impressive. Though with all that, today I want to give you four thoughts as you leave here to remember. Four thoughts that I hope as you leave Bridgeport Baptist Academy and First Baptist Church, hit the next phase of your life, wherever God takes you, you remember four things that we've tried to teach you and give to you. Four things. There's no test on it, no quizzes, no Google Classroom assignments on it, all right? Um, though maybe I should, Alex. We'll find out. But four, four things that I want you to remember that really if you are come to First Baptist Church or know us at all, I think you would agree that these are four things that we want someone to know. First thing is this. Don't forget this, that God loves you and so do we. All right, God loves you and so do we. I love, I love every single one of you indifferently. From Shannon, Mason, Alex, JL, Maddie, and Maddie. The joys in class, your different personalities in Bible class, all right? Whether you're a morning person or whether you're not a school person at all, all right? Whether you're happy or cranky, whether you're thirsty for coffee, whether you should not drink another drip of coffee, all of that, we love you. And you know that I do, all right? I've had the privilege of working individually with all of you on a different level, and I'm thankful for all the memories that I possess I know that I speak for the school that you will leave, you will leave a hole at the school, all right? And so we're thankful for you, but we love you. God loves you. That's where Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Remember this, young people. We love you. I love you. No matter what you do, I will still love you. If you leave here and you just make a wreck of your life, and I hope you don't. I'm not encouraging that. But if you do you will still be loved here at First Baptist Church. And it's only because God will still love you no matter what you do. Now, I hope you go on and live for God and whatever He calls you to do, and we'll be proud of you, but we will love you no matter what. I'll love you no matter what. You can call me at any time between the hours of 9 and 3. After that, call Pastor Goldemus. Our care doesn't even begin to compare to the care that God has for you. We tried to show just a little bit of it in our compassion for you. Going to Starbucks, we care about you. Good times, good times. Remember, he loves you, so live for him. Remember, he loves you, so please him. Remember, he loves you when it's good. Remember, he loves you when you think it's bad. God loves you, and so do we. You can always come back here, always. No matter what you've done, you have a home here. All right, don't forget that. God loves you, so do we. That's the first thing. Don't forget that. All right, if I pop, on, pop up on the college campus, which I'm apt to do, and I take you out to eat, which I'm very apt to do, it's because I love you, and so does God. Second thought is this, not only does God love you, think about this, don't be fearful of the truth. There's one thing I wanted you to learn in my Bible class is that the truth can stand by itself. You don't have to defend truth. Truth, as C.S. Lewis said, is like a lion. You don't have to defend a lion, you just let it out of the cage. It can take care of itself. The truth stands for itself. You've been taught some truth here. Some of it you remember, a lot of it you have forgotten, as evidenced by the different tests you took throughout the years. 
try to teach you a lot of truth. They try to teach you truth about the gospel, all right, how that God loves you and Jesus died for you. That's true. As you get out, there will be some people who say that's not true, but that's true. Truth, don't be fearful of it. We'll try to teach you about the Bible. I've tried to, to give you a love for God's word that I have, a love that this is a really, a really neat book. It's interesting, it's fun, it's enjoyable, and it'll make you think too. Truth about separation, truth about sanctification, truth about church, truth about ministry. Some will challenge your truth. You go to college and you're going to different places. You have different experiences, you have different, uh, different problems at each place and different benefits at each, at each place. Some will challenge the truth that you have. Some will say, why do you use that Bible? Some will say, why do you use a Bible at all? Don't be fearful of the truth. Don't shy away from the truth. Just release it. All right, it'll take care of itself. Some may ask you, well, why do you believe in God? Don't be fearful of the truth. I'm not, you don't have to be. Truth will stand all by itself. And if you get stuck, remember you can call me between 9 and 3 and we'll take care of you. Some will deny the truth. Don't get frustrated. Follow the truth. The Prussian king, Frederick the Great, all right, he was some king you probably took a test on years ago. You don't remember who he is. It doesn't matter, except this story does. He was widely known as an agnostic, someone who denied and did not believe in God, a, a God. But one of his generals, General von Zeeland, one of his most trusted officers, was a devout Christian. One evening during a festive gathering, uh, Frederick the Great began to mock God, Jehovah, and Christ. Make crude jokes until apparently the entire uh, party, the party group was laughing at God, at Jehovah. Eventually, General von Zeeland stood and he said, Sire, you know I have not feared death for you. I have fought and won 38 battles for you and now I'm an old man. I shall soon have to go into the presence of the one greater than you, the mighty God who saved me from my sin, the Lord Jesus whom you are blaspheming. I salute you, Sire, as an old man, but I love my Savior. And I'm on the edge of eternity. It says the place went silent, and Frederick the Great replied, General von Zeeland, I beg your pardon, sir. I beg your pardon. Listen, don't be afraid of the truth. It'll stand for itself. Those thoughts will come in. I'm afraid. Don't be. God loves you, so do we. Don't be afraid of the truth. Here's the next thought for you before you leave. Enjoy living each day for God. This is a great day, but there are so many great days. I love serving God. Every day is a holiday. It's like retirement, only better. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Years ago when I, was youth, when I was youth pastor, we realized that sometimes teenagers have a tendency to complain. Not these teenagers, but other ones, all right, outside of First Baptist Church and First Baptist Academy. Not none of ours ever. One day as Steve and I, uh, Brother Evans and I were working together, and we thought of this comment, we bring the fun with us. About anything we do, I have a good time at it. It doesn't matter. From shoveling dirt to moving bricks to going to Cedar Point, we bring the fun with us. Have fun as a Christian. Enjoy living each day for God. Someone said this, joy is the flag which is flown from the castle of the heart when the king is in residence there. Let everybody know that God is in your heart by the joy that you live each day. Enjoy living every day for God, each day for God. It's a wonderful thing to serve God. It's going to be fun. Life is tremendous. Sure, there may be some down days, but you know me well enough, I typically don't look on the downside of things. All right, what's happening today? It's going to be great. It's raining. Wonderful. We can play in the mud. There is no mud. That's great. We'll make some mud. Enjoy living each day for God, no matter where God calls you. And then lastly, forethought. Probably the most important one I'd give to you today if you can remember nothing else, and I doubt you remember anything, but remember this one. Live life in light of eternity. Psalm 90 verse 12 says, So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And young people, you're on a wonderful day, monumental day. You will never have a high school graduation again because I think all of you now are about done. Live each day in light of eternity. God's coming. Jesus is coming back. And uh, Robert Moffat said, We have all eternity to celebrate our victories, but only one short hour before sunset to win them. You have tremendous, tremendous opportunities. You guys are uniquely talented. I cannot remember a class where everyone is so uniquely talented, from sports to music to brains. It's just, to, with your hands, it's just uniquely talented class, a wonderful class, a blessed class. But to whom much is given, much more shall be required. And God has high expectations for you. You've been given a lot of things. So go out and live for Him. 
If he calls you to work in the ministry, then live in the ministry and do the best you can. If he calls you to work in a different workforce, then do that. But live for him in light of eternity. I hope you are crazy successful. And if you are, remember me. And my birthday is February 27th. But if you're earthly successful and a spiritual nobody, then you'll be a failure. All right, we didn't spend all these hours, the 26,000 plus hours, just so you can make a whole lot of money. I hope you do. But that's not why I put that time into you. That's not why your parents sent you to Bridgeport Baptist Academy. They sent you there because they believed that some spiritual truth would be imparted, that you would begin to learn the principles to live life in light of eternity. You gain houses and lands and cars. Never give the gospel to anyone again, and you'll be a failure. I hope you learn and remember how to give the gospel. You've learned it, that's for sure. Be successful as you live for God. There's a mythological king. Sisyphus was his name, whose love for life caused him to trick the gods, apparently by cheating death. And the gods responded to his treachery by forcing him, according to mythology, by endlessly rolling a huge boulder up a hill. When he got to the top, the boulder would fall back down the hill. He had to roll it back up for the rest of eternity. And yet, when you don't live for God, that's how life will feel. Like you're rolling the boulder back up, it'll roll back down. But when you live for God, there'll be purpose, there'll be direction. Someone said this, if I had the spirit of a windsurfer, I could soar. If I had the spirit of a mountain climber, I could ascend to great heights. If I had the spirit of a ship's captain, I could cross vast oceans. But unfortunately, I don't have the spirit of a windsurfer. I don't have the spirit of a mountain climber. I don't have the spirit of a captain. I get seasick. But I do have the spirit of God in me. Because I have the Spirit of God, I can do whatever the Spirit of God can do. What is too hard for God? Nothing. Live for God. In 1903, a young man named William Borden graduated from high school, and he graduated a millionaire. Wouldn't that be a nice thing today? Your parents give you a nice envelope and then check for a million dollars. He graduated a millionaire, heir to the Borden Dairy Fortune. Following graduation, William Borden traveled around the world. Everywhere he went, he was touched by the needs of people. He decided to come back and live for God. He wrote in his Bible, as he committed to missionary service, these two words, no reserves. He went to Yale and was educated by the best that money could buy. In 1905, he led a revival movement where a thousand, where a thousand of Yale's graduating class, a thousand of them, because of Will Bord, William Borden, a thousand of them were coming to weekly Bible meetings. A thousand of his 1300 class. He graduated from Yale in 1909 and promptly enrolled in a seminary in Yale. At that point, after he got done with seminary, he left all his fortune and f- sailed off to be a missionary. He wrote in his Bible, No Retreats. Just a few short time, a little while later, at 25, he passed. A failure, they said. Look what he wasted, his fortune, his life. He didn't have a full life of a man. Yet they found in his Bible these last two words, no reserves, no retreats, no regrets. Live for God. Live in light of eternity, there'll be no regrets. I hope you commit to continue thou in the things thou hast learned. Listen, we've tried to do the best we can. We will come short every time. We're just flesh. But we love you, so does God. Enjoy life. Don't be afraid of the truth. Do me a favor. Live in light of eternity. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for these seniors. Lord, what a tremendous, tremendous group. Lord, I have been blessed by them. Lord, I have been touched and enjoyed their time that I get to spend with them throughout the years they've been here. Lord, thank you for their parents. Thank you for their commitment. Now, just a quick moment with your heads bowed, eyes closed. There are many joining us on live stream as well. Appreciate everyone here, and I just hope that everyone here knows Christ as their Savior. And the Bible says we're all sinners, but that God loves us and Jesus died for us. And if you don't know that you're on your way to heaven, you can find out and you can make that decision to trust Christ today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, 
We deserve to be separated from God. But the Bible tells us that God loves us, but that He commended His love. He showed His love toward us. And that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Saved from what? Saved from separation from God. Saved from paying the price for sin. You can trust Christ today. Believe that Jesus died for you, was buried and rose again, and by trusting in Him and Him alone, the Bible says He'll save you and promises you a home in heaven forever. And my friend, if you're here in this auditorium today, you've never trusted Christ, or if you're online listening to the sound of my voice, can I encourage you? Can I implore you? Can I beg you to trust Christ today? Often we'll help someone pray a simple prayer like this. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I deserve to pay for my sin. But I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me, that he was buried and rose again the third day. Please save me. I trust in Jesus and him alone. And my friend, if you're not sure you have a hope, you're on your way to heaven, you can trust him today. There's not magic in the words. It's with the heart that man believeth. But if you've never trusted Christ, would you trust Him today? Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Tell Him, He'll hear you. I know I deserve to pay for my sin. But I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me, was buried and rose on the third day. Please save me. I trust in Jesus and Him alone. The Bible says that if you ask Him to save you, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we call the gospel the good news. Would you do me a favor? No one's looking around except for me. Heads bowed and eyes are closed. If you just trusted Christ today, would you do me a favor? Would you just slip your hand up real quick? What a wonderful blessing it would be to know on this day of graduation for these seniors that someone made sure of the eternal destination. You say, Pastor, I just prayed that. I meant that. I never prayed that before. If you're online, there'll be a number on the screen, an email address, and a website. Would you drop me a message? I'd love to send you a free book. Say, Pastor, that was me. I just prayed that. Just slip your hand up, slip it back down. I'll see it. Lord, I thank you for your gospel. Thank you for these seniors. Lord, bless them. Lord, help them to live for you. Help them to be successful in your economy. Lord, thank you for all you've done for them and through them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Al. Uh, what a year. Crazy year. A lot of different things happened this year. We're going to move into the next part of our service here with some presentation of awards. But before we do, I did want to just say to the seniors, as Pastor Hal said, we do love you. My wife and I were talking about you guys as a class. You guys were the first class she had when we came here 10 years ago. And you guys will be my first graduating class. It's pretty crazy how the Lord works. Um, now, none of, this, none of us planned this year to go this way. As Pastor Al mentioned, I mentioned before, this wasn't the way we wanted our first year to go. And this wasn't the way you wanted your senior year to go. But the Lord knows what he's doing. And he has a plan for each and every one of you. We are here for you. We always will be. So if you ever need anything, you can always come, talk to us, sit down, chat, do whatever, call, send a text message. We love you. And I'm going to miss you. As crazy as you guys are, I truly am going to miss you. So, first award uh, to pass out tonight is our salutatorian. And that one will go to JL Cross. Our valedictorian for the class of 2020 with a 3.858 goes to Shannon Ross. Every year, uh, we do a BB-8 scholarship to one of our seniors, um, and 
sought the Lord's wisdom when it came to this one. And this year, the BBA College Scholarship will go to Madison Cromwell. Our next award is our Christian Leadership Award. Uh, everybody, teachers, uh, staff, uh, puts their votes in when it comes to this. And again, this award isn't a perfection award, because uh, nobody's perfect. But it's a student who demonstrates a Christ-like spirit and a godly example, both inside the classroom and out. And this year, our Christian Leadership Award for the class of 2020 goes to Madison Cromwell. Alumnus of the Year, something I know that started a few years ago. Uh, you look at all the graduating class that we've had so far throughout the years. You sort of look at students who have come and gone and who are serving the Lord and maybe not even serving the Lord, but still uh, with their lives in church or in different things. You look at somebody who is modeling a biblical character, Christ-like compassion, and a faithful service for our King. And this year... I am glad to present the Alumnus of the Year Award to this person, close friend, a co-worker as well, and she beats me up all the time, Miss Samantha Evans. <laughs> Next, we will move into the presentation of our diplomas. Madison Elise Boyke. Wow, talk about a senior skip day. Sorry, class of 2016, but I'm pretty sure we took the cake on this one, and we didn't even get lectured. However, everything eventually has to come to an end. The last day of summer, a great vacation, or the closing chapter to an amazing book. Today is our final page to the beginning of an even greater story, and behind every great story, there are always people who helped influence it. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, thank you for always being like an extra set of grandparents. You'll be two people I miss the most as I begin this new chapter. Mr. Koblenz, I want to thank you for your prayers and your godly advice. Your classes were most of my favorite memories were made. Pastor G, thank you for never holding back. You always gave me the cold, hard truth, whether I wanted to hear it or not. Miss Evans, thank you for making this year extremely comical. I'm really going to miss finding staples in my hair, pencils flying across the classroom, and stuffing our faces full of food while having a long heart to heart. To my coaches, Mr. Cross and Pastor Howell, thank you for pushing me to do my best and always work my hardest. You taught me that it truly does pay to be a winner. And also, thank you to Bob, who showed me a love for boxing and reminded me that pain is just weakness leaving the body. Allie, Mickey, and Kelsey, thank you for being three people I could always count on. And last but not least, Mom and Dad. I wouldn't be standing where I am today as it, if it wasn't for your sacrifices. So thank you both for your strength and faithfulness to the Lord. I plan on attending Pensacola Christian College this fall and majoring in pre-physical therapy. I'm excited to begin this new journey and use my degree as a platform to reach people for Christ. Please continue to pray for me as I take these next steps. Madison Amy Cromwell. Walking up here today, 
I can't help but think about how truly thankful I am. Thankful that God is so good and has given me so many blessings for my family, especially mom, dad, Josh, and Marin. Mom and dad, thanks for your guidance, love, support, and for everything else you have done for me. Josh and Marin, thanks for all the memories. I can't wait to see what future adventures we will have. I'm also thankful for the pastors, faculty, staff, and my church family. Each and every one of you has touched my life in some way, been an encouragement, and for that I am truly grateful. A special thanks to Mrs. Winters for all those Starbucks runs after Teen Accountability, the Robinson family for getting me involved in the music and bus ministries, and the Trogans and Crosses who are more like family than friends to me. I am also thankful to have the ability to begin the next chapter of my life at Pensacola Christian College. Please pray for me as I seek God's plan for my life in music performance with the trumpet emphasis. I will leave you with my favorite quote from President Ronald Reagan. Live simply, love generously, care deeply, speak kindly, and leave the rest up to God. J.L. Rebecca Cross. I am reminded every day how much the Lord has blessed me by putting me here at First Baptist Church and Bridgeport Baptist Academy. The investment you as a church have provided, I have never taken for granted. My earliest memories of this church and its generosity has been exhibited by Mr. Jones. Since my first day in school, he has given me a dollar every week and still does to put in the offering. That's 15 years of dollars and it adds up. I know that he and his wife represent so many of you in this church that have given so that I can succeed. My teachers here who do this job as the Lord's ministry first and career second, I would like to send a shout out to each of them. Mrs. Coral, Mrs. Allen, Mrs. Goldman, Mr. Allen, Mrs. Dalton, Mr. Coblins, Mrs. Green, Miss Robinson, Mrs. Mitchell, Mr. Coates, Pastor Goldman, Miss Evans, and Pastor Howell. Go team! As for me, like my sister, the Lord has pointed me towards the nursing program at Pensacola Christian College. What I will do afterwards is open to God's will. I have already started classes online and will be heading to Pensacola in August to join the PCC Eagles volleyball team. Pray for number 13. To all my family, and especially my grandpa and grandma who have always gone out of their way to spend time with me, your mark on my life is permanently embedded in my heart. I finish by thanking my parents who have shared many adventures with me and will for an eternity. May there be many hugs to come in this life. Love, JL Rebecca Cross. Alexander James Kuntz. Four score and seven years ago, or maybe more like 13, my parents enrolled me in the Bridgeport Baptist Academy, where the teachers, starting with Mrs. Coral and on through my high school teachers, were dedicated to the proposition that even I could receive a Christian education. Now we are engaged in the great pandemic, testing whether this school or any other school so dedicated can long endure. We are met at the church that founded our school. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave teachers, principals, and pastors who dedicated their lives to their students here have consecrated it. For above our poor power to add or detract, the world will little note nor long remember what I say here. But it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the graduates, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they have thus far so nobly advanced. I was saved during SOS and baptized by Pastor JD. I plan to continue my education locally and serve the Lord at this church. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, to see that Saginaw is reached for Christ. I would like to thank my parents and my family for their full measure of devotion. I thank my church family for their support and encouragement. And, oh yeah, thank you, President Lincoln. Mason Luke 
Popo. Unfortunately, school has ended a bit sooner than expected, but this year has still been a blast. Before I leave, I want to take some time to thank a few people for helping me through all these years. First, my parents. Thank you for always working hard to give me what I needed growing up. Next, my teachers and pastors. Thank you for always helping me out throughout all these years. Mr. Collins, I'm going to miss your rabbit trails. In the fall, I plan to go out to Pensacola Christian College to study graphic design. Please pray for me while I start the next journey of my life. Shannon Lee Ross. To start off, I'd like to say congrats to all the teachers. You survived our class. We somehow managed to break something in just about all of your classrooms, so you'll have something to remember us by. I'd like to say thank you to Mr. Coates for being our class sponsor and to Ms. Evans for adopting us. Thank you to Mama Dalton for being our at-school mom and to Mr. Koblenz for taking time for joke breaks and podcasts. Thank you to Pastor Galdemus for showing us way more mercy than we gave him credit for. And a huge thank you to my parents for allowing me to go to school here and supporting me every step of the way. Lastly, thank you to my friends for making school an adventure. This fall, I will be taking classes from Liberty University for my degree in social working. Thank you all again for your love and support, and please keep me in your prayers as I follow God's leading in my life. So there's two more things to do before we're done here. All right, I have to announce and officially have you graduate. The authority vested in me. And we have to have an offering, and Madison's playing the offertory. Do you want to graduate first or wait to the offertory? Of course you want to graduate first. <laughs> no, I'm so proud of each one of you and thankful for the opportunity that we've had. And I am so proud, looking forward to what God will do. And uh, by the authority vested in me by the state of Michigan, and in completion and recognition of the completion of your requirements and assignments, I now pronounce you to be graduates from High School Bridge Baptist Academy. You are officially the graduating class of 2020. Now you can have Facebook. <laughs> so, that's right. Well, if you would stand with me, please, as, you, as just ushers come forward, it is our evening service. We did not invite you here for your money, and so uh, no, no fear about that. But it's our evening service, so we'll have an offering. And of course, one of our graduates, one of our former students of Bridgeport Baptist Academy, now Madison Cromwell, is going to play the offertory for us on her trumpet. And she, she will do an amazing job. You'll be blessed by it. You'll understand, if you've not heard her play, why she's going to go off to school for music performance. And she has begun playing the trumpet a few years back and really jumped into it with both feet, worked hard, and it'll be a blessing to you. And so I'll pray for the offering, and then uh, Madison will come and play for us, and then we'll be dismissed after that. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for these students, Lord, these former students. Lord, thank you for what they've done and what you've done in their life. Lord, thank you for the service, the time to honor them and honor uh, their parents. Lord, I pray that during this offering, that you would bless the gift and the giver. Lord, help Madison as she plays, that it would honor you and please you. In Jesus' name, amen.
thank you again for coming, being part of this service. Thank you, graduates, former students of Bridgewater Baptist Academy. Normally, we would go down to the gymnasium for cake and reception because of the pandemic. And right now, we're unable to do that. But I have I had some ice cream bars purchased. And as you exit the facilities tonight, you can grab an ice cream. There are people with gloves handing them out. So if you don't want one, just say no. Be more for someone else. But God bless you, graduates. So proud of you. Now, they will exit first, just like they're supposed to, right? Do you have a music song to play? They'll leave, and then the parents will be dismissed tonight. Thank you.